Yes, it's literally been nine months since I last posted about our grain bin project, and we have been working on it. Now, remember, we are doing this without going to the bank for money, where my husband is basically a one man show. He's doing most of the work himself. We have had grandchildren come out to help. Um, they're young teens, um, but inexperienced, except for what he's been teaching them. So they're learning, he's teaching, and it just takes time. So as I'm talking, I'm going to give you um, some video behind the scenes. One of the things that we've been doing is collecting supplies. And a lot of times we go to Facebook Marketplace and things like that to collect things at a cheaper price. Otherwise, we just go to the store, um, the hardware store. Uh, what you can see behind me now is we went, my husband bought a grain bin from the local Amish, $200 for this great big old grain bin. Why does he want that? What he's going to do, we're going to take it apart uh, halfway, and then he is going to use some of those round pieces for the roof on the front porch of the grain bin house. Then he is also, we decided, um, that part that's left at the end, there was like four rings and then a, a pointy part kind of like a roof we are going to use that to make a gazebo but this was a lot of work it probably took us three or four weekends just to get help out here and to take it apart uh, in one of my earlier videos you saw how many screws go into a grain bin well now you see how many screws skip come out of the grain bin this was fun and it's still not completed, but those are where those parts are gonna go. Remember, we're kind of working on different things at once. One of our interruptions that we had through the winter, right after this video was made, uh, back in September, I think, we had an interruption. Uh, Carl started feeling sick and ended up in the emergency room. We was uh, one night in the hospital, a couple trips to emergency, ended up getting his gallbladder out. And it was just a long process because we didn't know what was going on. And finally, and that was probably a three month long hiccup for him. And then it took time to heal from the surgery and everything. So that that is better. He's doing great, but that was a big hiccup. Another thing, another hiccup that we had, it's worse than that, I guess. It's um, my youngest daughter is pregnant um, at Easter. We all celebrated the gender of our new baby. It's a girl. And then she found out she, the baby's diagnosed with trisomy 18. You can look that up to get details. Yes, um, there's different variations, but um, this Elsie, the name of our baby, uh, probably won't make it. She's got a hole in her heart. She's got... Um, kidney problems, um, her brain stem, there's a lot of different things. And she's got a five year old sister that can't wait for her to come out and be with her. And so it's been a lot of emotional upheaval and lots of prayer. And I will say in the midst of this storm, it's been very heavy, a horrible situation. You get to see people and their faith in working, if that makes sense. Um, my granddaughter said that she goes, I, I the good thing she said, I've never seen faith actually put to work. And she said, and that, how it gives people strength to get through things like this that they have no control over. So that um, we're still dealing with, um, we're still praying, um, still heavy hearted. But again, it's to the point where we know there's nothing any doctor can do or anybody can do. And um, we'll just have to um, accept it as God's will. And hopefully my daughter will stay healthy and recover. Um, you never recover emotionally, but um, definitely physically. Um, so that has been on our hearts um, during this time as well. And of course that takes precedence over making sure I have a video out every week. So I've been going to a lot of her appointments. And if you're a praying person, please pray for my family during that time. Did we get anything accomplished during this time on the grain bin? Yes, we did. Um, actually, you'll see video here of the upper level where the framing went in. It's basically the same process as downstairs. Um, I, very quickly, there's a video here where Carl talks about how to make a jig because you have to make all the metal tracking um, at, at a certain radius to go around the grain bin. The Down below, he bought them. And the metal was heavier at grade and upstairs here, um, we had to do a little bit more work on, on making them. They weren't flexible. Now we had, he had to cut them and make them flexible. For some reason, it was hard to get the parts um, where before they were right on the shelf. This time they said it, it was a long time out if we ordered. So he went ahead and improvised and took the time to cut each one. You can see in the video um, to make it so it could be flexible and be turned into the correct radius that he needed. So that's done all the measured every four inches. Okay, go. 
I have measured every four inches and made a slice in it with a grinder. You can use snips, but the grinder's so much faster. And then screwed it down to my 13 foot one. I got a pencil mark on the other side of this. You can almost see the pencil mark. Screw it down to that. And then we'll put this one inch strapping on the cut side. And that'll hold the radius when we pull the screws out. Framing is done upstairs. And if you want to go back and watch the framing um, on, on another video, I'll put it up here at the top and you can uh, get more detail on what that looks like. Now I talked about taking time when you're not building to find parts and things like that. A lot of the things that we have are just right here around the property. We actually have things that we're going to sell. We're gonna sell a Jeep, we have a box van, things like that that we're selling for the income to pay because remember, we're not going to the bank. Um, we also are taking down a tree house. You can see the video behind me here. We started this tree house but, oh, probably 13 years ago for the kids and they live almost two hours away. It just got to the point where um, they just didn't make it out here that often and it kind of got kept getting pushed to the side. So we decided let's take the tree house down. We're using all of the wood and finally actually just this past week we finally got all of it out of there um, we still have a pile left here as you can see to burn but the tree house is down we we saved whatever wood that we could and we're going to reuse it because we're working on the foundation for the addition behind the grain bin this addition has changed sizes several times every time we sit down to talk about it what we want it to look like and how big we want it to be one of our goals for this grain bin house it's going to be a vrbo obviously but we also wanted it to um, in the kitchen be able to feed 12 people at once we have gone as a family several times to different vrbos or airbnbs and a lot of times there's not a place where everybody can sit together and i that was really important to me to have a great big long like farm table in there and everybody can sit and dine together if that's something they wish to do there's also a big porch on the outskirt side of it um, that they can also go outside to eat as well so basically from what I remember, the last time that he told me the dimensions, it's like 36 feet across in 12 foot sections. So 12 foot of that will be the porch. This is all horizontal. And then the other 24 feet will be in the kitchen dining area going across. And then it's gonna go 30 feet out. Now that sounds huge, but within that 30 by 24 inside, there will also be a bathroom, there'll be a pantry, and part of that will be the mechanical room. So some, a lot of that will get eaten up on the end. Um, earlier we talked about how we did not um, put any plumbing or stub ups in the concrete on the inside of the grain bin because we wanted to put them here in the addition just to make it easier to get to. So this has been a big process and what he's going to do is build a the pole barn kind of build where you put in square, um, he's putting in square concrete posts and then he'll have posts like four by four, four by six, that will hold it up. You'll get details on that later. We're not to the posts yet, but we did get all, he, not we, he got all of the post holes dug and we did um, dig them by hand and he filled them all up with concrete. So that's all ready to go. And now he's looking at putting the floor joists and the wood and he's got to get more gravel and things like that but that all the concrete work in the back is done we are going to pour concrete on the porch in the front of the house and we're going to pour concrete on the side where there'll be that big 12 foot by 30 foot porch um, out, out the back there and our other big project we've been working on is to put a fence in for our dogs and you can see this progress of this um, a lot of the fence has been pulled but again all those holes were dug by hand and we do have a skid steer but we didn't want to rent a post hole digger because then you're uh, take a chance of taking something that's been rented out on your own machine and the oils and stuff he was just worried about it possibly ruining our machine so between the grandkids and him all the holes got dug they made some money and everything's done but the re we have to keep the dogs um 
fenced in and we used to keep them on the porch but we want them to be able to run and play we are in the country and you're probably wondering why we're doing that but we have neighbors that like to hunt and our dogs if they go over there to get a piece of a deer or something they have a fit they get them on their um, camera and all that stuff so just to keep peace with the neighbors and the dogs to be able to run we've been working on that as well and hopefully that'll be done soon so there you go um, our next project as we're working the next video it may take you know a, a three or four weeks to come out but i will show you the progression of the addition that is the next thing that is going to be worked on and we have a picture here what it's going to look like i just grabbed something to show you the shape but that's what it's going to look like um, in the upstairs part um, i know this looks like an old horse barn but in that upstairs part it will be connected upstairs there'll be a doorway to go through at the top of the stairs and that's going to be an extra area where another bathroom will go and there'll be some beds that will be in there as well. So hopefully, at, as of right now, we're hoping for four to five queen size beds, probably four, and then maybe a bunk bed or something. But all that will be decided. Definitely it will sleep a good 12 people. So we'll have that figured out once we get to that point.